for loops are one of those programming constructs that have crossed over into popular culture. Even people who are not programmers oftentimes know what for loops are. But if you don't know what a for loop is, don't worry because I'm going to teach you right now. A for loop is very similar to the conveyor belt in a factory. Now, I am not a manufacturing engineer, but the concept of a conveyor belt in a factory is very simple. The items, or in our case, the data, is going to move across. And what's going to happen is it's going to iterate through each and every item in our data. And when the actual data is on the quote unquote conveyor belt, we get to operate on our little data items almost like a little robotic arm. The for loop itself is going to be in charge of actually moving the data, but you are going to be the person that's going to be controlling the robot arm that's going to perform work on each of your data items. In order to understand a for loop, it's important to understand what is going on within the actual construct. The creation of the for loop is very simple. It's just a for with a, some parentheses and some brackets, and you put your code inside of the actual for loop within here. But many times it's very confusing to figure out what's actually going on with a for loop because this in here can oftentimes look like hieroglyphics. So let's just kind of slow down for a second and let's talk about what each one of these three items in our for loop is. There are three items that control how our actual for loop operates. The first part is going to be the initialization of the variable. Because we're acting on numbers and because we need to provide the for loop with some type of data to increment, we have to initialize a variable because if we don't initialize a variable, how is it going to perform the rest of the calculations in the for loop? Once you actually get the variable initialized, the second part is going to control where the actual conveyor belt stops. And in our case, it is going to be at 10. We don't want the conveyor belt to iterate more than 10 items, so we're going to set it to stop at 10. And this is what this greater symbol is trying to communicate to us. If i is less than 10, then continue to increment, which is going to be the third part. The incrementer is going to be almost like the inchworm. It is going to control how you go to the next item in the actual for loop. Once we get done with the top part of the for loop, we can finally move on to the inside of the brackets where we're going to put our code. And remember, this code is the metaphorical robot arm that's going to reach up and perform specific actions that we code. What is that specific action? All we're going to do is do a good old console.write line. And within this write line, the only thing that we have access to is the i. And because we initialize this i, we can use our i within the for loop. And what's going to happen is that the robot arm is going to lift it up, console log it, move on to the next one. And it's going to do this all the way till we get to the number 10, which we programmed in our for loop in the middle part. And this is the old school way, but it's still one of the best ways because it's so technical and you can program these for, these for loop constructs into almost any type of for loop that you want to. But it is kind of unsightly. What other options do, do we have? Well, we have this thing called a for each. So let's just go ahead and slow down and talk about for reaches in a little bit more depth. This part right here is kind of easy to understand. You probably understand it's a for each. You understand the concept of code brackets, but what's going on in here? What's this in and how do these two words correlate? Well, the right side is going to be where the collection goes. This is where you're going to put your array and notice something very, very important here. Notice that the right side is pluralized. And whenever the right side is pluralized, you can identify it because it is a collection. It is plural. It represents more than one. But the left side is always in the singular form. And this is because the student is going to be what's passed down in here. And the iteration is going to be exactly the same. But we don't have to worry about eyes. And we also don't have to log numbers. We can just 
go straight to the actual string itself and we can go ahead and just console log it. And that's exactly what a for each does. It's going to do the exact same thing as the for loop, but it just does it in a more syntactically pleasing way. And when the robot arm iterates through each and every individual item in our array, it's going to console log it. And these are all our students. But it doesn't stop there. C-sharp is always evolving and the new new kid on the block is going to be link. And link statements are so powerful, most of the time you don't even need to understand them. You can just look at them and just understand what they're doing. And the best part of all is that everything is done in one line in a very declarative way. And all declarative means is that you can just look at it pretty much and tell exactly what it does. But let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code, let's get some practice in because without practice, these concepts are not going to stick. So the first thing that we will do is we will create the easiest for loop that we can. And the easiest for loop possible is going to come in the form of a for loop that just counts from zero to 10. Then what we will do is we will change the variables. We will change the settings within the for loop so that we can see how changing the settings or changing the variables affects the behavior of the for loop. And what I'll do is just go down here, declare a zero and set it so that once the actual item reaches over 10, it will stop. So I'll go into here and I am going to have it increment. You can even have it decrement. And I highly encourage you just to tinker around. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but tinkering with these settings will help you understand how for loops really work. And it's really the only way to learn. So let's just go ahead and put a console.write line in here, fire it up, and let's watch what happens. So we'll type in .NET watch run. And once we do this, you will notice something you will notice that we get a series of numbers from zero to nine. But let's just say that we want the number to actually calculate perfectly. We want one to 10. How can we actually do this? Well, one thing that we could do, one thing that we could start doing is we can set it so that it will stop once it equals number 10. And let's watch what happens. What will happen is that we will have a series of numbers from zero to 10. And this is almost what we want, but how do we get this zero gone? What we'll do is we will just initialize a one and initializing this one is going to allow our actual for loop to start at one instead of zero. And let's watch what happens. What happens is now we have the perfect for loop. We have the perfect counter of what we actually want. We want our counter to go from one to 10 and tinkering around with these settings allowed us to do this. So the counter example is great, but let's up the ante a little bit. And what I'm going to do is create a string array of my favorite hair metal bands. And feel free to uh, comment down below your favorite hair metal bands. But mine are of course Van Halen, who doesn't love Van Halen. I'm gonna put a little bit of Dokken in here and also I'm going to put a great, put great white. I'm a huge fan of the band Great White. And how are we going to iterate through this though? With a traditional for loop, we can do something like this. We can go ahead, initialize the zero, and instead of actually counting out the number that we want in order to iterate through, what we can do is use a property that's going to exist on our actual array. And I'm going to go favorite hair metal bands, and the property that I'm going to be using is called length, and it will automatically calculate the length for you so we don't have to calculate it ourselves. And I'm going to increment it, and I'm going to go down here and console log it out. So I'm gonna go console.write line, but how do we actually access our array? Well, what we do is we grab our array, we put the index, and then we put the I in the middle of it, and this is what's going to allow us to access each individual band in our array. And what? watch what happens. We will get Van Halen, Dokken, and Great White in the terminal down below. This for loop works great, but we can always make it better with a for each. And what we're going to do, we're going to declare a var band in our favorite hair metal bands. And that's really all that we need to do. We can do the exact same thing as we did before with a lot less work. And all that we have to do is just go ahead, put our band down below and C sharp will literally take care of almost everything for us. So let's go ahead and see what we get. And as you can see, it's the exact same thing, but far more syntactically pleasing. But 
no, we can't stop there. We even have to go further. What is it, another way that we can make this even better? Well, we can use link statements and all that we have to do is just dot into it. And when you dot into it, look at all of this stuff that you get. Now this is going to be a lot and what you will have to do is first convert it to a list. We have not talked about lists before, but a list is very similar to an array, just way more souped up. And we will talk about that in a video very soon. But all that we're going to do is declare a callback function, pass it in. If you don't know what a callback function, it's literally just a function that we pass in. And underneath the hood, C Sharp is going to do all of this for us, but it's going to be done in a far more syntactically pleasing way. So we'll just go into here, we'll go console, we'll go dot right line, and we'll say, um, I'm going to add a string here just so that we can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to say um, for each and put a colon here and then here is where we will log the i and watch what happens we will be able to get a lot more done with just a few lines of code and as you can see the for each prints everything out the video is getting kind of long so let's just do one last practice one and this one is going to be very very similar to the link statement that we had before but this one's going to directly act on the array data type and this actually exists for almost every single collection and then we can tack on the for each we can pass in our favorite hair metal bands just like this and we can do the exact same thing just in a slightly different fashion and on one line so i'll say console dot right line and i'll say array dot for each just so that we can distinguish them from the rest of them go ahead put a colon here and i'm going to go ahead and pass in the e that we declared in the callback function and when we do this watch what happens boom we finally get the array for each anyways hope that you guys like this if you did make sure to smash that like button make sure to smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching